Uh, just talk to, talk to them. Um, I think you can draw your own conclusions from what you saw. That's it. I, I really don't want to uh, denigrate this entire moment uh, for our organization and our, uh, our team. Uh, I cannot be more proud of a group of guys than I was of our, our, our players tonight. Um, Jake was spectacular, obviously, but how about the defense? Some of the plays we made, uh, some big hits by Dexter and, and Schwab and the entire group. Um, I have nothing but respect for the Pirate organization. Always have. I uh, was a Roberto Clemente fan growing up. So regarding anything that you thought may have been inappropriate tonight, you guys be the judge of that and ladies. And to the far right. Yes, sir. Joe, there's been a lot of discussion even by Cole himself about how he can uh, by Garrett Cole about how he can get very amped up and did yeah. you guys was that something especially seeing him so much this year that you thought you guys could take advantage of in this situation? Uh, honestly, that was not part of the discussion. He's really good. He's outstanding actually and uh, they've seen Jake a lot. We've seen him a lot and at the end of the day it just really comes down to execution of pitches in a moment. Um, we were able to get to him there with the obviously the, the, the leadoff hitter, the, the leadoff at bat by Dexter was actually huge. It's it's really rare that sometimes you could reflect back on a game of baseball and the very first hitter of the game could set the tone for the entire thing. You'd almost think that's crazy, but he did. And then of course Schwerber's homer uh, created some distance, and then on the the other home run by Dexter. But defensively, man, I mean the first play that. Addison had a chance to make that ball was scalded and the second one was hit probably even harder than that and then how about the plays by KB at third um, the game called by uh, uh, Miggy all that stuff was outstanding so I'm you know when I watch a game like that I'm really um, focusing on those other ancillary kind of components and our guys played a really good game of baseball tonight and right here in front to the right right here uh, Joe yes, um, well, having said all that but what, what impressed you most about Jake tonight. Um, <laughs> um, the thing that really impresses, it's a pretty big moment. It's, it's either you win or you go home. And uh, you guys um, and ladies have heard him speak about this moment in advance and how confident that he was. Um, some people considered it um, like almost on the braggart side or, or, or flagrant, but for me it's just self-confidence. And then again, he backed it up tonight. So that's that's what really stood out to me was his his composure, uh, the attempt by the uh, the Berg faithful to you know chant his name, which did not uh, infiltrate his mind whatsoever, which I didn't think it would. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, our whole team, uh, you're talking about three rookies starting tonight, uh, pretty much all contributing in a big way, whether it was defensively or offensively. Uh, but Jake. <laughs> Different cat, man. He's just a different cat. I can just think of Namath guaranteeing the Super Bowl victory. That's all I could think of the last couple of days. Uh, just sitting in a lounge chair out by the uh, by the pool with all those reporters surrounding him. I was a big Namath fan in '69, so that that was my thought. And right here to the left. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, was there a, a pitch count number or runners on base? Uh, it was infinity. Infinity. Yeah. He was going to finish the game. Well, you know, with him, I mean, I was. It was not about pitch count. It was about him maybe losing his stuff, right. or the fact that they were getting to him somehow. We had Rondon warming up just in case that were to happen. But otherwise, it was his game all the way. Felt that way from the beginning. My the game plan was to uh, hand area to the ball in the ninth, and try to upgrade the defense game in progress. And it kind of played that way. And over here to the right. Yes, sir. Joe, given how. Uh, Good of a series you guys played with the Cardinals two weeks ago at, at, at Wrigley. What are your thoughts looking forward to playing uh, them in a playoff series? Really eager. Uh, five games. Uh, it's a little bit different than this one and done kind of stuff. Uh, you got to spread it out a little bit. You have to work the game differently based on bullpen usage and, and those kind of things, pinch hitting. And just the roster itself is going to be different. Uh, the fact that it's uh, a five game series and not a one game series where you have to uh, organize it a little bit differently. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I'm, I'm already excited about it. Uh, everybody knows I grew up a Cardinal fan, and I get this opportunity as a manager uh, to work um, versus them in a uh, division series uh, 2015. It's pretty awesome, man. And beyond that, I don't want to make it personal. It's about the players, our guys getting this opportunity, our young guys. You have to understand, you got a bunch of young players getting this opportunity to experience playoff baseball. Um, their first year out of the shoot. That down the road is invaluable. 
uh, what's going to happen. You, 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 everybody's always talking about uh, the fact that we may have uh, uh, arrived on the scene a little bit earlier soon. Um, this just benefits all of our guys down the road. So that's 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 not lost on me. That's what I think about. Uh, but I'm really I'm really excited. I know our guys are about the opportunity to play in St. Louis and then and then bring it back to Wrigley. How about that? We get a chance to bring it back to Wrigley. That's pretty solid. Okay, and straight back to the left. Joe, as big as the moment was, how, how do you explain what comes across as a fearlessness in in your team? Uh, born of confidence, born, they don't have the experience, but it does come off as fearlessness. You know, um, I really believe um, uh, the process is fearless. If you're, if you're really, if you're really um, focusing on outcome and just winning, then you can't become fearful. But if you just focus on the process, the process is fearless. So I really, from day one, I think we just talk process more than anything. And so tonight's game, I talked to them yesterday, and Kenny Reviz was in the room, and I didn't even realize it. But as I was talking to them, apparently I never, I never used the word win one time, which I was pleased to hear after I got done. Um, so moving forward, um, if you really listen to a lot of the successful NFL teams or NBA teams, a lot of the focus is on um, the process. And uh, talking to Kenny this year, my conclusion was the, the, the process is fearless. So moving forward, if we could just keep focus in that area, there should not be any concern about playing a quote unquote a big game. We just won on Wednesday, and that was the message yesterday. And right here, which now right. makes us 15 and 14 on Wednesdays this year. <laughs> Excuse me, 14 and 13. So we're a little bit. I didn't let the guys know that, as I did know we were like 500 on Wednesdays going into today. That wasn't good enough. So today, tomorrow, I'll post something like that makes it 14 and 13. And right here, Joe, right. I know. Uh, I know Schwarber's just uh, just a kid, and, but you would, and he's been kind of doing this all year. But uh, you had talked about the importance of, of getting the lead. I mean, he seems unfazed for a, for a, for a rookie to uh, arrive. He is. Um, that's the thing about it. When I talk about our kids, everybody really focuses on their their skills, which are outstanding. But the thing that I think sets our young guys apart or permits us to win like this is the fact that they're so accountable. They're accountable to the moment. Uh, their work is spectacular. There's never one excuse coming out of their mouths. And furthermore, not even me or the coaches, there's, there's veteran players on this team that hold these young guys accountable to the moment also, which I absolutely, I talked about it uh, pregame today. It's true. It's absolutely true. The veterans on this team are spectacular. So they make my job easier. They make the coach's job easier. And there's nothing more effective than peer pressure. There's nothing more effective than a message coming from a peer. There's nothing. I don't care what anybody says. So we were really, uh, Theo and Jed did a wonderful job of putting that component of our team together also. And here in front. Yes, sir. Over here. Um, I, I know you said you had these young guys and getting this uh, playoff experience is valuable down the road, which could mean soon or, or later. But what if this is a year for these young guys and they're only 22, 23, 24? Uh, we're thinking that it is. I mean, we're not going to, you know, we're going to keep a positive outlook. Um, it is. It is about... One day at a time. I get, we're playing on Friday, Peter. We're playing on Friday. Okay, so we got to focus on Friday only. That's the message. I'm telling you, man, from the beginning of spring training, that's all I talk about is I don't want to play any different game when it gets to October than we play in spring training in April, May, June, July, whatever. You play the same game, and if you prepare that way and don't apply any more weight to any particular moment, chances are when you get to a weight, more weighted moment from the outside, you could play your game. And so uh, this does nothing but benefit our guys uh, in the future. I really believe that um, I, because I don't anticipate them, our guys, um, changing in a sense. Um, and, and if the accountability is there from within the group, and that's the best place when, when a guy that doesn't, when he thinks things aren't going his way, if he can't find any allies, that's a beautiful thing. And I don't think you're going to find an ally if you think you're being like, passed over, or if somebody's upset with you, you're not going to find that ally in that clubhouse. It's, it's a really tightly knit group. And take the last one right here. Yes, sir. The, the numbers for Arietta since June are historic. At, at this point, the question, have you ever seen a pitcher like him? Oh, I have. I mean, Bob Gibson, I mean, I was a Gibson fan growing up, so, um, and I hate to disappoint the Cub Nation, but I was a Gibson fan growing up. He was outstanding. So, I mean, my, my thought tonight was, to attempt to take Jake Arrieta out of that game would have been tantamount to taking Bob Gibson out of a playoff situation or a, a World Series performance. So um, 
I would say, in my experience as a kid growing up, I saw Mr. Gibson out there tonight.